I finally got my hands on the Asus RT AXCE7800, a Wi-Fi 6E tri-band router which was released last year, but I found a good deal and got it for cheap, so let's see what's inside the box. Well, there's the unit itself and underneath it we can see the power cable, some documentation and the Ethernet cable. The router has 6 external antennas, but I didn't expect them to be non-removable. This is usually the case for the cheaper devices, but I assume that this will become more widespread and will eventually reach the flagship models as well. Now let's fold them back and have a look at the bottom of the device. There are lots of ventilation cutouts and you can also see a couple of mounting holes. We do want to see what's inside these routers, so we do need to remove the four screws underneath the silicone fit. I actually managed to reach the warranty seal on my first try, which I will take as an accomplishment. In the US, you should be protected from these practices, although Asus has been very weird lately with how it treated the customers in regards to the warranties. Outside the US, you need to be very careful because that fragile piece of paper is apparently enough to render the router damaged beyond warranty repair. You will notice that there is no screw underneath the middle placed silicone foot, and a bit later in the video I realized that there is none underneath the large label either. At this point you do need to use a prying tool, but do go a bit softer than I did and perhaps use a plastic one since the case is easily damaged. Don't give Asus other reasons to void your warranty. Go around the edge and slowly detach each portion until the bottom panel pops out easily. We should now be able to see the bottom of the PCB with a fairly large heat spreader at the top. I removed the four screws to get it out, but it's still held on the other side by another set of four screws, so we do need to first detach the PCB from the case. To do so, we need to disconnect the antennas, which is easy to do, but do be careful not to damage them. Also, it's great that Asus didn't solder them to the board and hopefully doesn't adopt this practice, which is fairly common on other brands, such as TP-Link. After doing so, I could remove the rest of the screws and I also realized that I missed one on the other side. After I removed all of them, the heatsink on the front of the PCB fell out easily and I could also detach the heat spreader from the other side as well. On the bottom side of the board I could identify the storage chipset, while underneath the aluminum cover there was nothing that interests us at the moment. Going back at the top, there are two aluminum covers that had to be removed and we finally get to see the main components. I will go through each of them, but do pause at any time to get a better look at the chipsets and the circuitry as well. That's about all for now, I will test this router very soon so make sure to subscribe if you're interested to see it, I'm very sure that YouTube doesn't push this type of content that high otherwise. Thank you for watching and see you next time.